Hello and welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. My name is Richard Saunders. Thanks for tuning in once again. Now we're looking at affordable scopes today. Uh, we've been reviewing quite a few affordable PCP rifles over the last few weeks. The Crowl Puncher MP03, the ATA Arms Airborne, uh, the Hatsan Air Max, all really, really good rifles that you can buy for, for less than £500. And we thought it was only right that we should then be looking at some uh, scopes that you could put on those affordable rifles. That's not to say that these scopes, which all cost less than £150, wouldn't grace far more expensive rifles as well. But we've got three. We've got the, this is the uh, Richter Optic Exact. It's a three to nine by fifty. Uh, we've got a Nico Sterling Panamax, another three to nine by fifty, and we've got a Hawk Air Max, which is a three to nine by forty. Now. Um, just to save me repeating myself as we run through these scopes individually, um, just to cover off on some generic points. So, um, parallax. So parallax is the ability to be able to focus your scope on, uh, on the target that you're aiming at. And scopes basically come in two um, formats, either a fixed parallax, where the, uh, the point of focus is fixed at a certain distance, or adjustable parallax, where you can obviously adjust the focus for your target. Now, fixed parallax scopes are absolutely fine for air gunners, as long as that point of focus is at a, a, a distance that's commensurate with, uh, with air gunning distances. So if the, if the parallax is fixed at say 30 meters, then great, fine for air gun use. If the parallax is, is fixed at 50 or 100 meters, then you're going to have difficulty to zero or to, to focus on your targets at much shorter typical air gun distances. Um, which is why a lot of scopes for air gunners tend to have adjustable parallax. Now, parallax on air gun scopes tends to be uh, adjustable either via a collar on the objective lens up here or via a, a third turret, usually on the left hand side of the scope. And I'll show you the, the, the different parallax adjustments on these scopes as we, as we go through. The other thing that I'll be talking about is field of view. So field of view is um, basically the landscape that you can see when you put your eye up to a scope. Now what manufacturers do is they give you uh, an idea of the landscape or the, of the field of view range at 100 meters. And generally speaking, the lower your magnification, the, the wider that landscape or that field of view you will see at 100 meters. And the idea is that at low magnification, you know, that's going to be great for scanning fields and looking around to try and find a target. And then when you find a target, you can zoom up the magnification uh, to, to get closer into what you're going to be uh, taking a shot at. Um, those are the two kind of key sort of points generically to talk about. As I say, what we we'll do is we'll work through each of the scopes individually. Then I'll take them down to the range and we'll put them, uh, put the scope camera equipment on each uh, scope so that you can see the reticles and hopefully get an idea of the clarity uh, through the scope. So this is our first scope then. This is the uh, Richter Optic Exact 3 to 9 by 50. It's marketed or distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale. And the recommended retail price on this is £72.95, which is great value for money, especially as it comes with a set of uh, push-on uh, lens caps as well. Um, they're plastic, they you know, obviously just push on, uh, flip up at the ends, you know, you get the idea. It gives you really good protection for your scope. Um, it's a relatively compact scope as well. Um, it is 345 millimeters long, weighs 620 grams as well. So it's going to fit on, um, on just about any air rifle, no problem at all. Um, it has a 25 millimeter tube, which is this part up here. Uh, and scopes tend to come in 25 millimeter, 30 millimeter, or 34 millimeter, generally speaking. And usually it follows that the, the more affordable scopes tend to be a 25 millimeter tube, um, such as this one. Uh, it doesn't come with any mounts. So if you, uh, if you buy this scope, then you're going to have to buy some mounts to go with it. Uh, and you need to make sure that you get some uh, some 25 uh, mil uh, mounts. And also you need to make sure that you get a set of mounts that will ensure uh, that you get clearance for a 50 millimeter objective lens. This part up here, 50 millimeters, describes the, the, the size of the objective lens. Um, now, as a, as a 3 to 9 by 50, 
Three to nine obviously means the magnification range is three times to nine times. And the magnification is controlled by um, turning this collar up here. And then, as I just said, 50 refers to 50 millimeters, which is the size of this objective lens. Now, all scopes will have a uh, the ability to adjust the focus on the, on the crosshairs, on the reticle. And that's achieved by turning this um, uh, collar at the very back of the scope on the ocular lens um, to make sure that the crosshairs are nice and crisp in your view. Um, and to be honest, you know, everyone's eye is different, which is why you have this adjustment here. And once you've found um, the right adjustment for your eye, then you won't often have to change um, this, uh, this collar very often. And if you do, you know, it takes seconds and it moves really nice and smoothly as well. Now, um, moving forward of that, you have up here a, um, the ability to illuminate the reticle, uh, which is a nice feature, um, especially on a, on, a, on a scope that's priced at this point. And the, right, the, the scope comes with a CR2032 battery, which is inserted um, by undoing this, this cap on the top here. Uh, so your, your battery goes in the top there. And then these are always easier to take off than they are to put on. But once you've got your battery in, and I'm gonna leave that off for a second, um, by turning this turret up here, you can move through 11 different uh, illumination settings, uh, 11 different basically brightness levels of red. Now that's really good because if you're shooting in low light conditions, either really early in the morning or the last hour or so uh, of daylight at the end of the day, and things get to get a little bit murky, you can use this illumination feature to just light up the reticle to give you a little bit more visibility on what you're aiming at. Now, one thing to bear in mind though, is that um, the rear stat for this is obviously based on the ocular lens, on the eye bell back here. And on most other scopes, the, uh, if they have an illuminated reticle, the adjustment is like a third turret, usually on the left side, my side of the scope. Now, it works just the same, but the only thing to consider is if you're gonna use this scope with any kind of night vision gear, like a night sight or a PARD NV007, for example, that goes on the back of the scope, because of this, this turret, here, turret, turret here, you haven't got an awful lot of room to play with and that might affect your ability to put your night vision on the end and get really good focus with it. So just something uh, to bear in mind. Now the, um, the, the adjustment turrets themselves are of a screw cap design. You literally take these, uh, unscrew these turrets. This one on the, on the side is to adjust your point of impact for, uh, for windage, so left and right. And then the one on the top is to make adjustments for elevation up and down. And they've got a slight, they've got like a little uh, slot in them that you can put a coin in uh, or a screwdriver to adjust. But to per be perfectly honest, you know, just by putting your finger on them, you can adjust them. And the adjustments on this scope are uh, quarter MOA as well. Now the, um, the reticle itself is a floating half cross. And again, you'll see that when we show you the scope cam footage. And it has um, half mil dot um, uh, graduations in it or aim points in it. So uh, plenty of, of opportunity to, um, to find the right levels of hold over and hold under on the scope. And then the parallax adjustment, that ability to focus on your target, is achieved by uh, turning this collar on the end. And you can uh, adjust the parallax or the, the, the target focus right down to just 10 yards. Uh, so really good for, for air gunners because it means that you can take those close-up shots nice and comfortably. And um, it parallaxes out to infinity, which is, you know, plenty far enough. So that's the uh, Richter Optic uh, Exact. Let's put this one aside. And look now at our second most uh, expensive scope on test and that is the um, uh, Nico Sterling Panamax 3 to 9 by 50 again um, like the other scope 
You have the ability to change the, uh, the focus on the reticle. It's a three to nine by 50 um, magnification as well. And what I like about this is that the, the markings for the magnification are really nice and big. Um, and there's like a little lug up here, which not only helps you with turning the collar, but also indicates what magnification level you're on. Now the field of view for the, for the Panamax um, is at three times, um, you're looking at, uh, you have a, 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 a landscape range, if you like, at 100 meters of 14.7 meters. And at nine times that goes down to 4.9 meters. And that compares to um, 10.5 meters on, night, on uh, three times magnification for the optic, uh, for the Richter optic scope, uh, out to 4.1 meters at nine times. So quite a bit uh, bigger in terms of a uh, field of view on this scope. Once again, it's a, uh, a 25 mil tube. Uh, you won't get any mounts with this either. So you have to buy some mounts for this. Again, you want 25 mil uh, mounts. And because this is a 50 mil objective lens, you're gonna want uh, you know, mounts that are gonna give you sufficient height to clear to ensure that the, uh, the scope clears the barrel down here. Uh, these look like probably like medium mounts i would say but you'll find that when you buy the mounts it will specify the size of uh, of objective lens that it will accommodate the um adjustment for windage and elevation is very similar to the other scope screw cap turrets but rather than having to uh, put in a, a coin or a, a, a screwdriver to make the adjustments you can just literally just turn them by finger very, very easily. Now on this scope, the, the parallax adjustment is, sorry, the, uh, the illuminated reticle is on the left side of the gun. Um, and this will move through uh, five different levels of brightness in red and five different uh, levels of brightness in green as well. So it gives you a green and a red option. Um, and once again, you get a CR2032 battery, which is which you put in underneath this cap down here. And then as with the, uh, the, the uh, Richter optic scale, your parallax is adjusted by turning this collar on the front of the scope here as well. Right, so let's move on to our third scope. So this is the um, Hawk Air Max, uh, three to nine by 40 scope. Uh, and this retails by, uh, for um, 149 pounds. I should have said the, um, the, the, the Nico Sterling is marketed by Highland Outdoors. Um, the Hawk scope, you know, is very, very, the Hawk range is very, very popular. Um, right across, you know, retailers all over the country. Probably more hawk scopes on air guns than anything else, I should imagine. Um, yeah, so yeah, three to nine by forty. Um, again, you have the ability to adjust the uh, the reticle focus down here. The um, magnification collar up here is very, very smooth. Lots of good sort of ridges on this, and it's rubberized as well to make it very grippy, very easy um, to to turn as well. Um, and because this is a, a three to nine by 40, the objective lens is 40 millimeters as opposed to 50 millimeters on the other scopes. Once again, um, it's a 25 mil uh, tube. So, uh, and then once again, no mounts provided with this. So you have to buy yourself, yourself a set of 25 uh, mil uh, mounts. And because this is a 40 mil uh, um, objective lens, you could probably get by the, uh, a lower set of mounts than what I've got on here. Now, in terms of field of view, that landscape through the lens, um, you're looking at about 12.4 meters uh, on three times magnification at 100, 100 meters and 4.5 meters um, at, uh, at nine times magnification as well. And the other thing that I've neglected to mention is eye relief. So eye relief is the distance that you need to have between the end of the scope and where your eye would go. Uh, and it's um, they're, they're they're all fairly similar. This is 89 millimeters, 
Um, the eye relief on the uh, on the, the Nico Sterling um, is 80, milli 80 millimeters, and the, on the uh, Richter Optic is 84 millimeters. So about three three and a half inches, and that will vary slightly for everyone. Now the um, adjustment turrets on this once again are screw cap um, turrets, and like the the Nico Sterling, there's no need to put in a coin or a, or a or a screwdriver, they will just turn with your fingers nice and easily as well. Now, this scope does not have an illuminated reticle, but it does have the ability to adjust the, um, the parallax um, on the front here with this collar. And once again, like the other scopes, the parallax will adjust from 10 yards out to infinity. So I think that's all the key features on the three scopes. What we will do is we will zero in on, on some of those in close up and then I'll see you down the range and we'll put the scope cam on and show you the reticles and the view through the scopes. So I've come down to one of my permissions. The farmer very kindly lets me zero my guns here as well. And what I've done is I've put my side shot scope cam on, uh, on the first scope, which is the Nico Sterling Panamax 3 to 9 by 50. So we can hopefully get an idea of what the image is like through the scope. zooming in a little bit that was on three times I think so let's take that up to a little bit more oh, looks like the camera doesn't like it but hopefully that still gives you an idea so this is eight times Go back down to three times and give you an idea of the parallax and how that works. So the target is set at about 20 meters and in actual fact that is what the uh, the parallax adjustment 
on the scope says. I've no idea why the target is so wonky by the way because I guarantee to you that it's absolutely straight but there you go. So I'm just going to dial the parallax out a little bit further. I'm not sure if that makes the, the distance any clearer or not to be honest. But look, most people are going to use these scopes at the 25 to 30 meter um, kind of distance and that is that's parallaxed at 25 meters and as, as I say the targets are around about that kind of distance so uh, and through the scope the image is nice and clear to be fair so that is, that is the Nico Sterling Panamax 3 to 9 by 50 this is the Richter Optics uh, 3 to 9 by 50 and Somehow I seem to have managed to get the scope cam lined up perfectly on this, so um, yeah, don't know how I managed that, but good news. Uh, we are currently on nine times, so this is the four times maximum again at 30 meters. Let's zoom down then to three times magnification, the lowest setting. And the parallax on this is set again at 30 meters, so nice and clear. Yeah, it looks like the parallax is pretty accurate on this as well, which will help you with your, uh, your range finding. I should say those trees in the far distance there are probably they're at least 500 meters away I should think, four to 500 meters anyway. And the image through the, uh, through the, the scope is nice and clear. So I've swapped over now to the Hawk Air Max, the th again 3 to 9, but this time a 40mm objective lens. And we are currently on about 5.5 times magnification. So let's see how we get on with this. Now the parallax is set at, you know, it's indicating bang on 30 metres, which would look about right as well, actually. Let's see how we get on. That image is lovely and clear, even beyond the target. I can see that that image is nice and crisp. Let's try and zoom up a little bit. Right, that is pretty much the full nine times magnification. And the parallax through the scope is still very good. empty. Right, well yeah, that's um, that's very nice and clear actually. And the parallax is, would appear to be nice and accurate too, so that's, uh, that's a good indicator for you when you're out in the range or you're out hunting as to how far away a target is. If you use the parallax on the scope that will give you a good indication of how far away you are. 
Well, that concludes our field test of these three scopes, the Richter Optic Exact 3 to 9 by 50, the Hawk Air Max 3 to 9 by 40, and the Nikko Sterling Panamax 3 to 9 by 50. I have to say all of them really, really good scopes. I zeroed all of them on the rifles um, before doing the filming out here, and they all moved in the right direction, in the right increments, very, very good, nice, precise adjustments on them. Um, now, what I would say is the, I'm sure that the quality of the footage through the phone camera is not gonna do justice to the scopes because they're all nice and crisp and clear. Um, but I'm limited by the equipment and also by the idiot who's using it, which is me. But you know, bearing in mind that these scopes are gonna be used by people who are gonna shoot at 25 to 30 meters, maybe a little bit further, they all fit the bill really, really well. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, perhaps hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. And if you'd like more information on a whole range of air gunning topics and these scopes as well, then take a look at our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. And thanks for watching.